face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up guys and welcome to a very very long waited top 5 video where we're going to talk about the top 5 underrated Pokemon in the league format. And of course before I even go into this there are a lot more than 5 Pokemon that are underrated in league format. These are my personal 5 that I do believe are not drafted as often, that do similarly well and has a very, very defining role in a league concept. They're definitely much better than the tier making them out to be, which is why I really want to have these guys focused. But as stated, there are a lot more than just five, and this list could go on forever about Pokemon that are clearly <laughs> underrated in this kind of concept. Uh, now, if you guys are new to this channel, uh, I clearly do a lot of league concept or league battles, so this is more close to heart for me because this is definitely going out of the tiers a lot and more talking about focus, what defined these Pokemon as a standalone concept. So with that said, without further ado, let's of course start off with this list, starting off with my number 5. At my number 5 spot, I have Magmortar. Now, my motor have for some reason have never really been that popular when it comes to tiers. Always actually been NU, even in Generation 4 when it was introduced. Now, here's the thing with my motor that makes it so well rounded for league format. It has a niche speed tier of 83, making it very, very suitable of actually attacking Pokemon that are defensively capable. And of course, with a very high attack and special attack, clearly special attack peaking a lot more in attack. Uh, it is able to maneuver itself really well, and it has a very, very broad move pool. The one that comes first to mind is, of course, that it has access to the likes of Thunderbolt for a special attacker with a fire type to be able to hit offensively with a super effective hit. Yeah, that's a dangerous combination. Now, so that it does get the likes of Focus Blast, and it has a rather broad physical move pool, such as, of course, Earthquake, making it very capable of dealing with the likes of Heatran. So, it's one of those Pokemon that Due to its niche speed tier has always been held back in a tier format, but in league format it is very usable and the variety of it just makes it that much better. Hell, you can even use it special defensively, it works well with Assault Vest, it works well also as a leftover set or Shuka Berry with Will-O-Wisp. The sky is the limit with this Pokemon, its maneuverability and the things that made it so bad in um, being Jack of all trades made basically in the tiers. It's the one reason it stands out in the league concept, because it fits so many roles. It doesn't peak in any of them, it doesn't dominate any of them, but it, Jack of all trades means that it can do a lot of things very, very easily. And it's an HP tier, it's its most precious perk in my honest opinion. Being like, of course, outspeeding Gyarados and Milotic, which are two Pokemon that clearly are famous in this league format because they are so special defensively in Bond and kind of speedy, so Magmortar is definitely underrated and should be drafted more often. Coming in at my number 4 spot is Sceptile. Now, Sceptile is a bit weirder because the reason it's not drafted as often is more to what the Grass types is for our team. Grass type in general are defensive typing that of course is able to soak the likes of Earthquake and Thunderbolt and stuff like that. It has a good resistance capabilities and you usually want to have of course it more defensively bond held. You kind of want to of course grass combination with something else like let's say poison and of course as stated grass types generally more defensively involved. Sceptile do not represent that at all. It has a rather okay special defense but defenses yeah it's down there and the HP is not impressing anybody. But what does Sceptile bring? Well, the Speed Tier. It is one of the fastest grass types in the game, if not the fastest really. There are very few that outspeed this Pokemon. And it has an ability called Unburden, which means that it can nullify any possible Scarf in the team if it's so desired. It has a dangerous special attack and has a decent usable attack stat and a broad move pool at that. So Sceptile, while holding it back somewhat by the typing itself, are a very very niche and very very capable Pokemon in the league format mainly because it's not focused all of its EVs in speed as it is in the tiers because there's need to outspeed certain things. Here you can be more precise and with of course the likes of Swordstance being a capability of Core Sceptile, 
it has some move pulls, it even utilizes itself really well. And of course it has Leech Seed, it can be a stall your Pokemon, it has a decent special defense to pull that off. But the foremost of course X ability is of course this very high special attack and actually be able to throw out Dragon Pulses or Leaf Storm just straight on at it. And of course with White Surf can keep going at it. Sceptile might be one of those Pokemon that can be easily walled out, but it is niche enough to utilize itself really well. It's not so easy to wall this Pokemon out as people make it out to be. And that's why it's someone number four spot. At my number three, I have Noivern. Now the thing is here, Noivern is not famous for being a bad Pokemon or anything like that, but the Dragon Flying typing is a very, very tough situation to be in. With both Dragonite and Salamence being, of course, a primary Dragon Flying, Noivern has a tough time keeping up. It isn't as offensively in bond as those two Pokemon. It isn't even uh, defensively in bond, but it does have one thing going with it. It is rather speedy. And it actually has a decent bulk, you know, 85 in HP, yeah, that does make it stand out a bit, even though its defense and special defense are only around 80. The thing with Noivern is that outside of Roosting and of course its very, very high speed here, it does have two abilities that makes out for it quite a lot. It is an excellent specs user or a Scarfer with Frisk in mind. It can learn Switcheroo, which is very, very strong with it. Infiltrator, of course, nullifying any kind of screens or of course, Substitute, making Noivern a lot, lot more effective than people making it out to be. Uh, it also has U-Turn, which is something that the Dragonfly combination of its bigger brother does lack, which means it can pivot around quite a bit. While, of course, flying is not the funniest thing to pivot with, it still is a very, very strong thing to have. Together with, of course, its special attack of 97, it is usable. It certainly is usable. It has, of course, the likes of Boombers, Flamethrower, Dragon Pulse, Dragon a great to meet you. So there are a lot of special attacks that this Pokemon use well, and of course it has Super Fang, it does learn Sky Attack. It is so many things this Pokemon can do that it might actually be underrated for the very reason of the things it never ever gets to use. Noivern, as stated, is not as effective as of course Dragonite and Salamence, but it doesn't make it a bad Pokemon, it just makes it usable in a different fashion, and the things it does outside of those two Pokemon is pretty scary as big special attacker with this caliber and speed yeah that's hard to prep for guys at my number two spot i have the necromedusa or jellicent now jellicent is very often a part of my league roster and it's for a very good reason it is a spin blocker it has recovery it has mixed defenses with a very very high hp stat it is tremendously annoying to be dealing with and of course its speed here is not necessarily that bad because you can adjust yourself rather well for the other defensive Pokemon and of course Taunt because that is what you like, you really really like to have Taunt on this kind of Pokemon. It is a very interesting Pokemon because on paper it seems like you know it has a lot of weaknesses while it has a lot of resistances too. But this is probably one of the few Pokemon that can deal with, you know, the, the Fire Fighting stab, which are so prominent in the League format. Infernape, for example, is one of those Pokemon that just smacks anything, usually very easy. But this Pokemon can actually do it really well. And with, of course, the berry usage, this Pokemon does stand out quite a lot. Uh, I'm very biased when it comes to Jellison, but it has a lot to do with that it saves a lot of things. It's very hard to actually KO. Due to that extreme HP stat, it just keeps on coming. You really have to hit this thing hard to be able to utilize it well. And mostly, people are deciding to use in Pokemon such as, of course, a Dark type with a for a physical move to be able to KO it. And the reason that's not necessarily a bad thing is that this Pokemon can retaliate to Will O Wisp. It's just one of those things. It's a perfect standalone one army core. And in my honest opinion, it does very well more often than not, and which is the reason I love this Pokemon. It is one of the best Pokemon I drafts in League format. I never want to go without it. And people should fear this thing. Damn, Jelly Sand is just up there. So it's, it's a very clear reason why I'm making it number two. It is super biased, but I do believe most of you guys can kind of understand why. So before I even go to my number one Pokemon that I think are underrated, I really want to talk about the Pokemon that could just as well have made it, but didn't. And if this would have been a top 10, these guys might as well have made it. Charizard is one of those Pokemon that I do believe are held back with its Stealth Rock's weakness. People are forgetting now that due to Simu Belly Drum, this thing can actually recover quite nicely. It does have Roost, and it does, like I have 100 speed here and I have 109 special attack. It's very hard to be dealing with, just as bad as Moltres really. 
and being slightly speedier just makes it that much better. Uh, Swallow, uh, excellent speed tier 125. Uh, now, of course, with the raising and special attack, boom burst spamming, and of course, for sod guts, it is dangerous. It is very dangerous, super formidable. It should definitely be utilized more often. Miss Majors, 105 speed tier, 105 in special attack, 105 in special events. Has Call Mine, has Nasty Plot, has a super broad move pool. Um, not often as used, really. Uh, it has access to Willow Wisp, it can be used as special defensive set. Very, very nice Pokemon. And uh, I don't know why people aren't using it. Miss Majors should definitely be utilized more often. I do believe Knockoff is the foremost reason it isn't used, but even at that, I mean, Miss Majors is a one man army. It does really well against almost anything due to Broad Moveful itself in the League concept format. And uh, next one is, of course, is Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir is a Pokemon that I do believe most people are avoiding because it's kind of hard to use. Um, but one has to realize it has a very, very strong stabs. Uh, or stab, stab, and um, of course now with Simu accessibility and a Soul Fest, Dusk Noir is a very, very intimidating Pokemon, and it has Pain Split, very low, of course, HP and very high defenses. It's super hard to KO. It can utilize Pain Split really well, and yeah, just watch out. This Pokemon is basically what I want to say. And when it comes to the last Pokemon I wanted to put on this list, it's definitely Poliwrath. It barely made a cut, actually. It was between him and Magmortar. I do believe Magmortar stands out a little bit more in Poliwrath. But Polarat has one of those really, really nice things going on. It is, of course, Water Fighting type, which is a very, very good defensive typing. Very good mixed defenses, lack a little bit in speed, has Water Absorb, has Switch Swim, has a mixed move pool with the even Vacuum Wave Priority Finding move. So Polarat is actually rarely drafted. I do believe it mostly because people are aiming for those defensive Water type with Recovery. But even if that, Polarat is a very, very tough Pokemon to deal with mainly because of those mixed defensive and, of course, the mixed stabs that just make it so hard to deal with properly. But with all that said, let's, of course, go to my number one spot. And it shouldn't come as a surprise, Tauros is most certainly my most underrated Pokemon I will do in the League format. I rarely see this Pokemon drafted, and I don't necessarily know why. Its mixed move pull with Sheer Force and of course Life Orb makes this Pokemon so unpredictable. And now of course in this generation it does get Body Slam. It did get Body Slam previously but not with Sheer Force, it gets that now with of course the generation 1 moveset. Making Body Slam while weaker than Rock Climb still as ferocious to be dealing with because you do connect to hit. Which is so important. Uh, and of course, the most and foremost thing that does stand out with, of course, Tauros outside of it is actually Mighty Attack of 100 in base is, of course, its speed tier. 110? That's a lot. For the mixed move pool that it is and the one-man army that Tauros represents, yeah, this bull is out for blood. And um, I do believe the best thing about Taurus is, as stated, that it has a special move pool it can use. Special attack is 40 base. Yeah, it looks terrible. But think about it. Share Force makes it, of course, a 30% boost in its uh, operated damage output. And life from that, making that more of a 60% boost. Trust me, it starts doing damage. And the thing is here, it means that the physical Pokemon that can try to wall it out is very likely to be 2 with KO by special attack. Now, Toro's drawback is it just actually don't get any fighting move, or you know, it gets Rock Smash, right? That's that's about it. But even at that, you know, you want to use the Shear Force capability of this Pokemon anyway, and with that in mind, it has actually a broad move with Shear Force. It has Sen Headbutt, Iron Head, Iron Tail, Rock Climb. There are things here going on that makes this Pokemon very, very tough to be dealing with. But as stated, the issue is that it doesn't get any proper fighting move, no superpower, no close combat, nothing like that. Not even a high jump kick, which would have been incredible thinking about it. But it does get Earthquake and Surf, making at least the rock types that could potentially be walling it and the steel type to be at least somewhat forced out. As stated though, for steel type, you do have Fire Blast, so it is an option. But Earthquake clearly, if you want to capitalize on its high attack, and it also gets mixed defensive that are definitely usable to get it, of course, Intimidate. So it has even accessibility there to play a defensive role for any team if you so desire. So it's quite suspectful why Tauros isn't more capitalized or used in the league format, because what it represents, it's so hard to prep for a hit, so hard. And as stated, it is probably the defining one-man army due to its being able to be so specific of what it had to be prepping for, much like the Metagross Mega Metagross situation, 
people are blaming Mega Metagross for not being as usable because um, it is it has too many they have the five slots move pool. Basically, it has an issue that it need more attacks. When you are learning know what you're facing, you can be specific. Tauros can be just that too as Metagross. It can be very specific what it wants to hit hard and do very well against almost any matchup. With 110 speed here, it can utilize that just fine. So with that said, that's gonna be actually the end of this video. And of course, I really want to hear what you guys think. What Pokemon in League format do you guys think are underrated? Because as I stated, there are way more than five. There are really way more than five Pokemon. Hell, I even consider Tillery to some extent, but I didn't do that. But you know, it, it was definitely up there. Uh, so that's it, guys. Thank you for so much watching, and I'll see you guys in the next top five. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.